Section F, the empirical rule, or the 68.95.99.7 rule, says that uh, in a normal distribution, the percent of values that lie below the mean, well, I'm going to draw our distribution. So here's a normal distribution. 100%, if we fill in all everything below that distribution, is, it fills in 100%. The mean is right in the middle, and um, if we cut that in half, to the, you got 50% on the left side, 50% on the right side. So 50% of the data on the below the mean, and 50% of the data above the mean. If I go one standard deviation to the left, and one standard deviation to the right, that covers 68% of our um, of our data and what I'm meaning 68% I'm meaning the area beneath the curve is 68% of the area the total area if we go two standard deviations we have covered quite a bit so I've gone two to the left of the mean and two to the right so that whole region there it's about 95% of the data. And if you've gone three standard deviations, this curve gets closer and closer to the x-axis and just kind of branches out. You've covered almost everything. 99.7%. So C through E is what the um, the empirical rule tells us. Okay, so now we're going to apply this. Uh, we have 1,800 students at Cal State University who took a biology exam. The scores were distributed normally with a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 5. So here's the mean, 70. And if I go one standard deviation to the right, I add 5, add 5 again, add 5 again subtract 5 and then um, what we're going to do is we're just going to split up this distribution into smaller parts okay um, we know from 65 to 75 is 68 percent because that's one standard deviation each way. So if we cut that 68 in half, we get 34 and 34 percent. We also know um, that if we go two standard deviations, so if we go from 60 is two standard deviations to the left of the mean, and two standard deviations to the right would be 80, that is 95%. Um, but we've already, we're trying to find out what are those um, smaller, what's the area between 60, 65, and the area between 70 and 75 and 80. So I'm going to take 95 minus what we already have, 34 plus 34, which is 68. Ninety five minus sixty eight is twenty seven. So twenty seven is the two areas, um, this part right here between seventy five and eighty, and also the part between sixty and sixty five. And both those are it's symmetric, so those are the same area. So I'm going to cut that twenty seven in half. I get 13.5. So we know this is 13.5% and 13.5%. Okay, 
right, so we've covered 95% so far. Do this again. From 55 all the way to 85 is 99.7%, but we've already accounted for 95%. The 95 is 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5. And so to see what's left, we do 99.7 minus 95 and get 4.7. Cut that 4.7 in half. You get 2.35%. And then don't forget there is more outside because um, there's a hundred percent under the whole curve. There's a hundred percent under the whole curve and we've only accounted for 99.7 percent which is almost everything. So if we consider the whole hundred percent We've accounted for 99.7%. So there's 0.3% left over, which is, if you cut that in half, 0.3 divided by 2 is 0.15. So we got 0.15% on the edges. So now we can answer all these questions pretty easily. What percents between 65 and 75? That's your 34 plus 34, that's your 68. What percent are between 60 and 70? That's 13.5 plus 34. which is 47.5%. What percentage of scores is between 60 and 85? 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35. So that's between 60 and 85. Add those up. What do we get? Let's see here. Ninety-seven point three five. What percent are are less than fifty-five? Point one five percent. What percent are greater than eighty? 2.35 plus 0.15, which is 2.5%. Part F, approximately how many biology students scored between 60 and 70? Uh, so this is not asking what percent, but actually how many students. So first let's find out what percent scored between 60 and 70. And we between 60 and 65 we have 13.5%. Uh, and between 65 and 70 we have 34%, which comes out to be 47.5%. And then if we go back and read, we see that this is out of 1,800 students. And so we need to multiply 1,800 with 0.475. The 0.475 is just changing that um, 
percent to a decimal. So eighteen hundred times point four seven five is eight hundred and fifty five students. Part G says approximately how many biology students score between 55 and 60. So um, grab the percentages between 55 and, and 60. Um, in this case, it's just 2.35 percent. So we're, there's 1,800 students times, we said 2.35 percent. If we change percent to a decimal, we we move the decimal place to the right, or sorry, to the left two places, so it's point zero two three five, and we multiply together eighteen hundred times point zero oh two three five, and get forty two point three. But we're talking about actual students, so round that to the nearest integer, which would be 42 students. Number five asks us to identify the standard deviation and mean from the given normal distribution. So the mean is the, the, the middle of that distribution. This is symmetric and so we see that the mean is 2.5 and then these are marked off for we're making an assumption here that they've marked off one standard deviation to the right is 3.2 so what's the distance from the mean to 3.2 so the standard deviation is 3.2 minus 2.5 to find that distance and we get 0.7 number six in a normal distribution of test scores 68 percent of test takers scored between 61 and 75 uh, we're going to assume this is the middle, 68%. Um, and so we have 61 here and 75 here. What are the mean and standard deviation? Well, if I find the average of 75 and 61, so if I go uh, 75 plus 61 divided by 2, so find the mean. So 75 plus 61 is 136, and 136 divided by 2 is 68. So that's the mean. To find the standard deviation, um, a couple ways to do that. So if 68 is the mean, the standard deviation is the difference between 68 and 75. Which is 7. 